dickhead. F*** you. On the phone. The only bearer that old shitbox should be copying is old Shazza from the Royal in the back taking the old two in the pink and one in the stink. Would you like little pussy, JD? Hybrid cars. Hi, oh, yeah. They've got great fuel economy, but they're boring to drive. Well, at least that's what I thought until I drove the hybrid. You could certainly feel how powerful the vehicle was on the straights and... Whoa! I've driven a fair few cars in my time. This guy should just take this camera to time attack. Apparently it's a weapon through the corners. Yeah, there's some power in this car. Yeah. It's exciting and fun to drive. It's exciting and fun. Just fuel efficient. Power. Power, power, and what? more power. It was exciting and fun to drive, not just fuel efficient. He's probably a vegan too. Whoa! He probably um carries his bike on the back. Very nice words, but happens to be wrong. Seriously, that guy's getting half a stiffy over driving a Toyota Camry. Whoa! You're coming home with a Camry. Mm. Not only that, it's hybrid. Just, just think of the all... power. Just yeah! Think of... Just think of all those killer hybrid Camrys you've got into as taxis and just got, got out and thought, I just want to go to Toyota and buy one of those. Yeah, but it's got the handling, the power. Yeah! It's got everything. You'd be um, smashing barrows in that thing, I reckon. Whoa! Do you need to build an LS for it not to break? Or am I just unlucky? It seems like all I gotta do is jingle the keys and I can get them to blow up. Well, you know what this guy needs for LS engine longevity? More limiter, limiter, and just more limiter. So in response to listening to the last bench talk talking about the boat anchor grey and our dislike for it, comment came straight in. Nardo grey is actually nice though. Actually I've noticed lately in a lot of comments there seems to be a lot of love for the Ford Barra. You complete me. Yeah, but not everyone thinks Ford Barras sound that good. That's what this bloke said. So that's what dog shit sounds like. Yeah, but this is coming from someone who doesn't like four barras, yet they click on a best of, you know, best Bar yeah. of a barra sound video. Go figure. How's this bloke talk about a bit of an oh shit moment? Wow. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Uh, yeah, I've just, I've just fucking crashed into a river, dude. Well, if only he had the appropriate watercraft. Go on, dude. I'm in a river. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. You know what really grinds my gears? People who insist on reverse parking. Now, I'm not talking about if you if you want to reverse parking in a shopping centre and there's no cars around, by all means, do what you want. I don't care. You know, you're not affecting anyone else. But when you got three cars behind you, now it's when you first drive into the first part of the car park. So there's no other. You can't go anywhere. Yeah, you can't go anywhere. You've got to get into the car by first, but then these people, it doesn't matter how many cars have got behind them. F you, I'm holding up both sides of the road while I do a reverse park. It's insane. It's a bit like, it's a bit like if you were leaving to reverse, if you've driven in forward, like a normal person, and you decided to reverse out, you wouldn't give way to anyone. You just reverse out and hold up the whole road. That's kind of what it's like. I, I don't understand it. Yeah. All these cars now have reverse cameras. I'll tell you one thing. It takes a lot longer to reverse into a car park than it does out of one. I don't understand what the logic How is. How hard is it to, to drive forward into a car spot? Who do you think you are? The parking inspector? My dear officer, you could not even give me a parking ticket. Who is the dickhead now, hey? I see a lot of comments too about drag racing times, in particular the elapsed time, acting like they're experts. But realistically, they have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, this is so uh, such a typical comment I see. You obviously don't have much drags experience, which is fine. Not having a go, I love that one. But if you told people your car does a 12 second quarter and it really did a 12.8, people would laugh at you. Well, it did do a 12 second quarter. It's like saying if Usain Bolt ran a 9.8 100 meter sprint, he ran nines or he's a nine second, he's a sub 10 second runner. He's a nine second runner. Your logic is just stupid. That kind of elapsed time terminology is not just used in drag racing, it's used in most sports. It's pretty common, but apparently not having a go. 
One of the coolest videos I've seen this week was this awesome small block powered VF spinning to 10,000 RPM. Just screaming. Yeah, if you haven't seen uh, Flinty's YouTube channel, check it out here. That's not an L98 engine. It's an LS engine. Just oh. my two cents. No shit, Sherlock. Sevens? That's pathetic. Red Victor 1 can do just above six seconds. Now, why is Red Victor 1 relevant to this car? Absolutely no idea. One's got an engine that's, I don't know, three times the size. They're totally different classes of drag racing, but hey, experts. Well, one thing that annoys me, you, and probably a lot of other motor enthusiasts, are speed cameras. Or oh, safety cameras, apparently, safety cameras. Mate, you just need to calm nah, down, alright? Nah, oh, fing out enough of this fing shit. Now, this legend saw one at the back of a safety car, put a, I think, a beer carton on his head to hide his identity, ran up, and uh, covered the camera. I mean, this bloke is a legend, and as they say, not all heroes wear capes. What we're dealing with here is a complete lack of respect for the law. But it brought out the do-gooders, the sheeple, you name it, on Facebook. I mean, these comments are just unbelievable. Here's, here's, here's a sane comment, firstly. Instead of watching the road, you have to watch your speed all the time. I agree with that. There's you that do, many yeah. speed changes, 40, 50, 60, 80. It's all over the place. And it's not just that. If you're in a 60 zone, you hit 63, you go past the speed camera, you can be done. It's, there's no tolerance anywhere. You can in Australia. I, exactly. But in, all Victor these, in Victoria, they're not marked. All these there's no signs for speed cameras. Either. Exactly. I mean, that, that, yeah, a lot of interstate outside of Victoria actually have signs saying speed cameras ahead here. They're just hidden everywhere. Mm. I mean, they're usually kind of easy to spot, but it doesn't That's mean... It's even legal now. It didn't used to be, but yeah. now they're legally allowed to put them at the bottom of a hill. That's crazy. Like, um, and these do-gooders who go on about don't speed, don't get caught. I mean, if you're telling me that your car has never exceeded the speed limit by one kilometer mm. hour, you are just full of it. These people in these comments, it's just just the nation of bootlickers. Lick them! Lick the boot! Here, here! Now I want you to lick them that way! Lick them this way! I don't want to read a bunch of them. I mean, it, it'll, it'll make your stomach churn listening to this crap. And this explains why there's so many Sunday drivers on the road. I mean, coming here, it felt like it took forever. It's insane. People just doing... You're in an 80 zone, people sitting on 62... In the right lane. Yeah, you know, in, in the right... 63... In the right but they take about 25 seconds to get up to 63 in an 80 zone. Oh. And... As soon as they hit a hill, they don't realise if their car's on 40% throttle, you might need to give it a bit more to actually get up the hill. So when we're cruising at 70 or 80, why do you think we're doing 45 at the top of the hill? And when I say hill, it's just a little crest. It just drives me nuts. But I mean, this is the type of comments you'll see. If you can't glance at your speedo, for one one-tenth of a second to see your speed, you shouldn't have a license. Your next car needs cruise control. So instead of looking at the speedo, you're going to be playing with the cruise control every five seconds to look at the speedo to set the speed. I mean... The speed zone changes here every, what seems like every kilometer. The backlash against these cameras and the hate generated by their inability to drive within the legal limits. Lick it! Lick that boot, boy! I was going about the speed limit, just not too far from where I live. They've just upgraded a road. Well, it's taken them, it's one and a half kilometers. They started in August and they still haven't finished. They're not adding lanes. All they've done is put a footpath in. And then now their speed limit has been reduced from 60 to 50. Saving how, saving How lives. is that upgrading a road? Yeah, they generally, sometimes they make the road actually better. Better and lower and the, they speed lower the speed limit. Just to create even more congestion. Hmm. And it's hilly too, so there'll be plenty of places to put a camera. The boot licking continues. I have no problem with supporting the camera. More power to them, and while they're at it, they should also remove any warnings regarding them. If they raise money from more people disobeying the law, then that's good. How about people just drive safely and don't speed? So hang on, so all you have to do to be a safe driver is to not speed. Not speed. No wonder we've got a nation of people who just... You know what they do? They look one meter in front of them. That's it. 
At what point do these people finally, yeah. does it get through to them? When the councils, whoever's in control of this garbage, when the speed limit goes 50, 40, 30, will they just do 30 and just, oh, don't speed, and we'll just do 20 Ks everywhere? Yeah. Just bend over and take it, no loop, these people. Lick it! Lick that moon boy! Moron. If you go over the speed limit, you should get fined and lose demerit points. Plain and simple, there should be more cameras. You know, with the speed cameras, right, it's a win-win situation for the government. 100%. Because if the road toll goes up, you can say, hey, we need more cameras to bring the road toll down. They're not speed cameras, they're safety cameras. They're safety cameras. Safety cameras. Sorry. Sorry. Then if the road toll goes down, you can then say, the speed cameras are working, we need more, more, cameras. more cameras. So, it's just a win-win revenue stream. Still using a prehistoric hub dyno to get higher numbers. Why don't you put some wheels on it and give customers numbers that go to the ground? Those hub dynos are not accurate. I would much rather see power figures with the wheels on as this will show the true number. Alrighty then. The true number. What true number is he talking about? And how is at the wheels more accurate than on a hub? There's no slip on a hub. Do they not realize it's power measured at the hub? Does he also not realize the point of a dyno is for tuning? Hmm. They think it's just to give you, you've made this many kilowatts. Yeah. It's actually kind of irrelevant. It's if, tuning hmm. power to the graph. If you want to know true engine horsepower, put it on an engine dyno. But the engine doesn't drive the car, so apparently that's... That's not, not accurate either. You've got to have it on a, on a chassis dyno. Now this comment's referring to a 10 second BA, Series 1 Falcon. They're the matchstick rods version for p people who aren't that familiar with Fords. That's run 1048, by the way. On a budget, my ass. LOL. That's a lot of money sitting under the hood, not to mention the, the Brembo brakes all around. Because Brembo brakes somehow make your car go faster down the quarter mile. Does that mean if, if the car ran 1048 and you took the brakes off and put standard ones on, it's going to go slower? Mm. The car had 100% stock internals. It had a second-hand servo. I actually had the list of modified... It hardly even had much exhaust mods, did it? It had valve springs. It had a stock exhaust. It had E85, obviously. There's no head studs. The turbo was bought second-hand. The, the transmission is a built BTR one, but there's heaps of options there. But as far as a genuine 10-second car goes, this is pretty good compared to most cars we've seen. But budget my ass. Whoa! This is in reference to the VW's uh, I don't know, diesel gate or emissions um, scandal. In one corner, Volkswagen, the world's biggest car maker. In the other, lawyers for 100,000 VW and Audi owners. This is a p perfect example about fake outrage. Show me the money. I felt so utterly deceived. My trust in this company was completely obliterated. I'm offended. I was offended. Just look at the outrage. Look at these people. They're offended about their car not meeting the emission standards they thought they were. Like they even looked at them and for starters, going on about emissions in the environment, why would you even buy one of these all burners? I know, so it's funny. You're having a cry about the environment, yet you go and buy a diesel. Show me the money! This is the day that the rubber hits the road for Volkswagen. I'm offended. I am offended because I am always offended. I am offended. Talk about a cash grab. There's only one thing in it. The cost of the case is eye-watering. In federal court, 30 lawyers, including some barristers, pulling around $15,000 a day. Show me the 